So you know JavaScript and a little bit of React, but you want to know how to build full stack web applications like an online shop, a dashboard, an AI chatbot, a SaaS, or the next unicorn. Then frameworks like Next.js help creating web applications fast because it handles tooling and provides additional structure, features, and optimizations. However, they are not easy to learn and even harder to master, and the best way to learn them is to use them. So let's learn Next.js, just enough to get you started. First things first. Next.js recommends using PMPM, which stands for Performant NPM, as your package manager because it's faster and more efficient than NPM or Yarn. You can install PNPM with this command and then create a new Next.js app. However, I'll use NPM for this video because it's still the most popular package manager. With NPM, you can create a new Next.js app with NPX and pick the options you want. For example, you can select TypeScript or have Tailwind CSS pre-configured. Since Next 13, Next.js uses the app router instead of the pages router. So pick that option when creating a new app. I'm also going to use TypeScript and Tailwind CSS. Once it's installed to see it in action, open your terminal and type npm run dev and open localhost 3000 in your browser. You can make changes in the page.tsx file under the app directory, like deleting everything and adding a simple h1 tag with the text my first Next.js app. Next.js supports different ways to style your app. You can use Tailwind CSS, SAS, or CSS modules. One of the most popular ways is to use Tailwind CSS. As I pre-configured Tailwind CSS, you can use it out of the box. For example, add some Tailwind classes in the homepage. If you're not into Tailwind CSS, you can use global styles or CSS modules. If you look inside the app folder, you'll see a file called global.css. You can use this file to add CSS rules to all the routes in your application. You want to add global styles that apply to all pages in your app inside this file. If you plan not to use Tailwind CSS at all, make sure you opt out of it in the initial setup. CSS modules are a way to write CSS that's scoped to a single component. Let's try it out with an example where we also create our first component. Create a new components folder inside the app directory and add a new folder called shape component and an index.tsx file. We import the styles from a CSS module file, which we have to create in the same folder. Make sure to use the .module.css extension, otherwise it won't work. Then add a shape class inside the file. And lastly, add the shape into our page file. And now we can see a blue square on the page. Changing fonts is also very easy in Next.js, and you can use Google Fonts without worrying about data privacy. Important for EU countries. Inside app slash layout.tsx, you can import the font from Google Fonts and add it to the body class. I mentioned before that it's great for data privacy. This is because Next.js will automatically download the font at build time and serve it from your server. This means no additional network request is made since the font is hosted on your server. As you might have noticed, Next.js also added a metadata object to the layout component. This is used to add metadata to the page. Metadata is important to make your site more discoverable and understandable by search engines and social media platforms. Simply add it to the layout component or page component. The layout component is a component that wraps the entire app to create UI that is shared between multiple pages, while the page component is a component that represents a single page. Since we added the metadata to the root layout component, it will apply to all pages in the app. We can also generate dynamic metadata if we, for example, need to fetch data from a CMS. To add a favicon, add the favicon file inside the app directory. Okay, we talked about the difference between pages and layout components. And so far, our application only has one page. To understand layouts better, let's create a new page. Next.js uses file system routing, which means that each folder inside the app directory is a route. So to create a new route, you create a new folder inside the app directory and add a page.tsx file. In Next.js, page is a special file that exports a React component that represents the page. You might wonder if the components folder inside the app is also a route, since each folder inside the app directory can be a route. It's not, since it doesn't have a page.tsx file, so it won't be rendered. You must include it to make a folder a route. To create a new route, create a new folder called dashboard and add a page file. 
you can now visit this site by going to slash dashboard. To create a dynamic route, you can create a folder inside the dashboard folder with square brackets like ID and add a page.tsx file. We can access the dynamic route params by destructuring the params object. If you go to slash dashboard slash 123, you'll see dynamic route page 123. To see the layout in action, you can add a layout component to the dashboard page. The layout component receives a children prop that can be the page or another layout component. To navigate between pages, we use the link component from Next.js. Why not use the A tag? Because the link component prefetches the page when the link appears in the browser's viewport. And second, there is no full page reload when navigating between pages. The layout component will be automatically wrapped around the page component inside the route slash dashboard. Each app can have multiple layouts, but they always have a root layout that wraps the entire app. That's where we added a font. When it comes to fetching data, Next.js by default uses React server components. This means that the data fetching happens on the server and the data is sent to the client. Here we call dummy data inside our dynamic dashboards page. Since server components are executed on the server, you can query the database directly without an additional API layer, and you can use async await syntax. However, with server components, you can't use React hooks like useEffect or useState. You need a client component for that. To use a client component, you need to add the useClient directive at the top of the file. For example, let's add a counter to the dashboard page. If we try to increment the counter, Next.js will throw an error. That's because we set the page as an async page. Async await does not work with client components, only as server components. Remove async and you can see the counter on page is working now. If we remove use client, then our app will break again. This time because we need to declare the page as a client component to use hooks. We mentioned that by default, the data fetching happens on the server. But what if you want to fetch data on the client? You can use client side libraries like SWR or 10 stack query, or you can use custom route handlers. If you have used Next.js before, you might know them as API routes. To use custom route handlers, you create two new folders called API and post. Inside the post, API directory add a route file. To call it, let's change the button to fetch the data from the route handler. Now we fetch the data from the route handler when we click the button. However, it's often better to use server components for server-side data fetching instead of custom route handlers. You can use custom route handlers for client-side data fetching or for mutating data. Great, we know how to fetch data on the server and on the client. What happens if we have a lot of data and the user has to wait for the entire data to be fetched? This is where streaming comes in. When we have a lot of data to fetch, we can break it down into smaller chunks and send it to the client as soon as it's available. This data fetching strategy is called streaming, since we are streaming the data to the client. There are two ways you implement streaming in Next.js. The first way is to add a loading.tsx file inside the dashboard folder. This will wrap your entire page inside a suspense boundary and show an instant loading state. You can add a skeleton UI here. This works for the entire page, but what if you only want to stream specific components? Then we can use something called React Suspense. Suspense allows us to delay rendering a component until a condition is met, like data fetching. Inside the post page, we wrap the feed component inside a suspense component. The feed component fetches the data, and with the suspense component, we can show a fallback UI while the data is being fetched. If we refresh the page, we can see the suspense fallback UI for a split second before the data is fetched. With Next.js, we can also render a whole error page with the error.tsx file. It serves as a catch-all for errors that occur in our application. Create a new error.tsx file inside the dashboard folder. We need to use use client directive because the error page has to be a client component. The error page accepts two props, error and reset. The error prop is the JavaScript's native error object. Reset is a function that tries to reset the error boundary. 
so it will try to re-render the route to see the error page for a new error in the dashboard page. Now, if we refresh the page, we can see the error page. Clicking on the button will try to re-render the route. Next.js also helps us handling 404 errors with the not found function. The error page is great for all errors, but the not found function can be used when you try to fetch a resource that doesn't exist. If we add the not found function to the dashboard page and trigger it by deliberately setting it to true, we can see the 404 page if we refresh the page. We can customize the UI by creating a not found.tsx file inside the dashboard folder. Refresh the route and we should see the custom 404 page. This is great for specific 404 pages for different routes as it takes precedence over the error.tsx page. And that's it for the world's shortest Next.js course. This was a very brief introduction to Next.js, but it should give you a good starting point to build your own Next applications. For more information, check out the official documentation. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.